you mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you. For there the life of Jonathan is vilely cast away. What is holy dancing, and where did it come from? The holy dance is an outward expression in the physical embodiment of an inner praise. The story of King David dancing before the Lord with all his might in 2 Samuel 6 is probably one of the most popular stories that connects dance to the Bible. It is also one of the most misunderstood passages as well. Many people talk about how David danced naked in front of everyone, then laugh about it and move on without giving it much thought. The reality is David knew his clothes didn't change who he was. His royal clothes carried no significance before God, and so he took them off to dance. He was still wearing something underneath his royal clothes, so the shocking part of this story is not that he was nude, but that he was the king, and for a time, he became a servant. And it was all right for a king to dance. Is the word of the Lord. At that time, only servants and slaves danced for the higher classes like kings, and yet King David took that position of a servant. God desires his worshipers to learn a lot from this little story. First off, David illustrates for the church that no servant is greater than his master. Just as Jesus humbled himself as a servant by washing his disciples' feet, David sets the bar high by challenging the church never to become too proud not to become undignified before the Lord. can be used by the Holy Spirit in the church because its involvement requires participants to let go of their pride and allow God's opinion to become the only opinion that matters. The statement made by the holy dancers says that it doesn't matter what people think about them because God's pleasures are far more worth and significance than the uncomfortable fear, contemptuousness, and condemnation of fellow believers. To not step out in obedience to what the Spirit is prompting whether it is dancing, kneeling, raising of hands, or even crying, is to say that God is worth less than the possibility of derision and disapproval from other fellow believers. It's all about the footwork.
of the avenues to finding true freedom in worship and experiencing a naked confidence like King David. was full of dancing. It was something that was the norm throughout the time of the Old Testament. It was truly a gift from Yahweh. Dance functioned as a medium of prayer and praise. As an expression of joy and reverence. And as a mediator between God and humanity. This understanding of dance permeated the faith of the early Christian church. The children of Israel would hold religious festivals, celebrations for weddings, and triumphant victories. And dance was an essential part of the celebrations of the ancient Israelites. In many Old Testament biblical allusions to and descriptions of dance, there is no disapproval, only affirmation of dance used as a medium of worship. In the Hebrew language, the most frequently used root for the word dance in the Old Testament is karar which refers to the whirl of the dance and implies highly active movement. This is seen in multiple different cases within the Old Testament. At the defeat of Pharaoh's armies following the crossing of the Red Sea, Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances, Exodus 1520. And also, when David slew Goliath, the women sang to one another in dance, 1 Samuel 29 and 5. These expressions of dancing come from complete joy in God and excitement for his goodness in their lives. was a true worshiper in spirit and in truth. He didn't need a dance instructor to dance. He forgot the crowd, and in a spontaneous moment of spiritual emotion, he began humbly expressing his spiritual fervency as he danced with all his might before the Lord. That was the kind of God-honoring dance that was both Holy Ghost-inspired and Holy Ghost-anointed. Mm -hmm. 